Yes, you read the title right. I own every single music release by the Common Rider Girls back in 2011, as well as just a lot of miscellaneous merchandise and stuff like that. And we're going to go through all of it because it was a very interesting time in my life. Uh, so let's do it. So for a little bit of context, Common Rider Girls was an idol group formed by Avex and Toei back in 2011 to promote the Common Rider brand. They'd go to events, they'd make music, they'd do like concert performances, and just overall support the Common Rider brand while also making their own original music on the side. They became most well known at the time for wearing rider belts of a, a respective rider that they were given, and they would wear them in, in concerts and performances on the album. Like that was their main thing. They each had a rider that they were assigned to, and they would represent that rider at, of sorts. And, and it very much became like very visually distinctive. There were members that came in, members that left. I think at the most there were at least like eight different members uh, at the most, and then. It trickled down a little bit because people would graduate and do other things. And right now, as it stands like 12 years later, I believe there's three members left. But uh, I say all this because Common Rider Girls, I got into Common Rider when I was in middle school. Very soon after that, I got into Common Rider Girls because they did a performance in Common Rider Forze. And I saw that and I immediately jumped on to listening to their music and, and, and just collecting and stuff. At the time, they absolutely were my favorite music artists outside of Michael Jackson. Like my, in terms of Japanese media, they were my favorite music artists. So I would go out of my way to collect CDs, DVDs, you know, just concert performances, anything I could get my hands on because I, I wanted to hear more, I wanted to see more, and I wanted to, to follow what they were doing. So because of that, uh, over the years, I've collected so much and I have every single CD release they ever did every single album they ever did, every DVD release that they did, including like rare photos that people have probably never even seen of common writers themselves, as well as uh, concert footage that no one's like has never been uploaded and uh, even like a belt buckle replica that they, they wear. So we're going to go through all of it. I'm going to show you guys everything that I have and it's going to be a great time. So like I was saying, this was a very interesting time in my life. It lasted very long, I think up until 2000. 17 was when I really stopped, but I, I still really love the group and a lot of this, most of this, I'd say at least 90% of this, I haven't seen or touched in years. So it's going to be like a trip down memory lane for me. So I hope you guys are interested. Also, before that, uh, I'm wearing this shirt that I got when I went to Common Rider the Diner back in 2019. It's really cool. It's got the little Ichigo Typhoon on it and on the back, it's a bunch of different riders. Um, I just love this shirt and it reminds me of uh, that trip and that's a, a video all for itself if you want to see it if you guys want to see that video just let me know in the comments um, but anyways back to what you're actually here for now from what I remember I put these on my shelf in order like chronologically so we're just gonna go ahead and see what we got <laughs> okay so this is let's I'm gonna move over here so this is let's go Rider kick 2011 this was the very first release that they ever did and if you look closely in the very front that is uh, I forget her name Lord help me, I forget her name, but she played, uh, she didn't play, she represented Kamen Rider Ryuki, and she didn't last long in the group, I think she was in the group for maybe two years, maybe a year, I think it might, maybe not even that, but she wasn't there for that long, uh, I think she, from what I remember, she fell ill, and um, wasn't able to continue, but uh, this was the first release they did, they did covers, um, so the first one, of course, is a cover of the very first uh, Kamen Rider theme song, Let's go Rider Kick. And uh, I'm, I'm not too big on the covers that they did. I, I feel like the covers are probably the worst thing that they did just because they're, they're not really much of anything. They're, they're fine covers, but like I'd rather just hear them make original music. Sorry, I'm trying to stop the glare. But as you can see, uh, the writers on the back are the writers that were given to the respective idol group members at the time. So at the very, very start, it was O's, Blade, Ryuki, Kiva, and Den O. Uh, Erika Yoshizumi, Nagura Kaori, I forget Ryuki's name, <laughs> Nao Yasuda, and uh, Isaka Hitomi, and they are right there. So this release comes with Let's Go Rider Kick, the song Koi no Rider Kick, and Heart no Henshin Belt, which was a song that I listened to all the time. I, I don't even know if I can really play the music because Avex would destroy me. I'll probably play like a few seconds of each song, <laughs> maybe, but... There's that, and this one was released in 2011. There's the orange disc right there. They, they had a very distinctive logo in the beginning 
where it was very much a woman with detailing on her leg and she was doing a kick and it, it looks like a, a cat i guess i guess it was supposed to be like a cat i don't know uh this group was formed for the 40th anniversary of common rider you can see it right there uh, but they very quickly abandoned this logo and they they would switch out the logos the logos with different releases so this was the first release that they ever did not bad so the very next one immediately after is common rider v3 again a cover of the v3 theme song it's all right. I don't really, I, I'm not going to have much to say about the covers because I, I never really popped them in. The only time that I would ever listen to the covers that they did would be during like concert performances where I just want to watch everything from the concert and like not really skip anything. So there's that. There are all the members at the time right there. You can see Ryuki is still there. The Ryuki uh, member would be gone after this one. I don't remember there even really being definitive performances where she showed up. She was in the music videos for the time, but there was only two of those at the time and uh, she was gone. So there's that. And this release comes with Kamen Night V3, uh, the second song, LOL, which is j just about, it, it's exactly what you would think it sounds like. And uh, those are the only songs, the instrumentals and then the music video. So there's that. And there is the disc right there, a sort of dark green to match v3 this was the last time they would use this logo in a cd release so very very short-lived but there's that i you know these first two discs are probably the least popped in just because i again i i was not too big on covers so oh wow this is interesting so this is a dvd release i didn't get until very much later because i didn't even realize i didn't know that it existed this is let's go common writer girls I don't remember what those characters are on the bottom, but this was like a variety show type thing where they would do different challenges and go places. It was actually fairly long. I think they even did stunt training uh, so they can see what it was like being a writer. This was the last time the Ryuki girl was seen in media relating to Kamen Rider. She left after this and you can see in the middle, there is Endo Mitsuki who uh, ended up being the Forze representative because Forze was about to air at the time or maybe it already had started, but she came in and essentially replaced the Ryuki member. So she came in and they did this. And this is the, again, the variety type show thing. I believe this was also the last time they wore the, the V3 outfits. And what's so significant about this release is that it comes with a song that was never released anywhere else. And it's very rare. This is the only time you'd get this song. They did a cover of Journey Through the Decade, which was, of course, the theme song for Kamen Rider Decade. Now, that's the only cover that I remember them, them doing that I kind of enjoyed a little bit because it was very just, I don't know, I, I have a bias for decades, so I didn't hate the cover at all. It's a, it's a very nice cover, and again, it comes with this and only this, and you can't get it anywhere else. Um, I haven't opened this in a while. What is this? Okay, so this is a flyer for the O's movie that had just come out, I believe, and on the back is Mirror Man? Okay. Just a bunch of advertisements in the front that I don't really care about. And another flyer. So there is the disc right there. And right behind it, you can see, is the CD for Journey Through the Decade. And as I said, it's never been released anywhere else. <laughs> Common Writer Girls version, Journey Through the Decade. I don't think I've ever actually added that to my phone. I don't think I've ever popped that disc in. Maybe I'll do that later. Yes, let's go Common Writer Girls. I might watch that sometime. Okay. Common Rider Girls Saite. So this was the very first music release that featured Endo Mitsuki. And actually, this is the very first song that I ever heard from the girls. Because, of course, as I said earlier, they did a performance in Common Rider Forze where they appeared on screen and they were singing a song that was actually a cover of someone else's song. <laughs> it's, it's them in covers. But they, they were playing characters at a prom, I guess, and they were singing this song. It's a very beautiful ballad. One of my favorite ballads I've ever heard, just because it's, it's so nice hearing their voices all together. And they're all pretty like good singers. Uh, of course, a couple stand out probably further than others, but I, I've always enjoyed their voices when they all sing together. And Saita is just one of those songs that I would come back to again and again, even after I stopped listening to them all that much. Um, Indo Mitsuki is my favorite, or was my favorite member of the group for a long time, uh, partially because she represented Forze, and I love Forze. And this release is very nice. This release comes with Saite and OK All Right. 
featuring the group Everset, who actually created the song Saite. So they also appeared on this release as well. I love, can I just say, one cool thing about the rider drivers that they wear is that whenever they do performances, their drivers are modified where the belt straps have the color of the, the main rider that they are supporting. So like for instance, Kiva, uh, Kauri has a, a yellow belt strap for the Kivat belt and uh, Erica has a, a, a red belt strap for Deno. Like it, it's very nice, it's a very subtle thing, but they would always have that whenever they would wear the drivers. And I, I kind of missed that when they stopped. So there's the inside, it's advertising the Music States album that Forze had coming out, as well as a green CD disc. And on the back, I believe it's also orange. Oh, no, I'm sorry, it's black. That's the DVD for the music video that I haven't seen in a long time. I gotta, again, this is a trip down memory lane for me. I gotta go back and like listen to this stuff again. So. There is Saite. <laughs> okay, so th this is when they really started popping off. I mean, of course, they were still sort of obscure. They did music for the show that appeared in the show, and they were doing appearances and cameos and concerts and stuff like that. But they didn't really have, like, the biggest, biggest fan base. And a lot of people actually did not like them when they came in because they did sort of start to take over when it came to the, 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 the music for the show, which is unfortunate. Um, a lot of people didn't really like their music all that much, and that's fine. But th this is when their music really started to pop off within the world of Common Rider because Wizard came in and Wizard was huge for them. Wizard was their peak. Wizard was when they were doing the absolute most and just, tr I guess, trying the hardest. And this is when that started. And this is when this is the time frame that I remember the most uh, during high school, early high school, late middle school. So this is Common Rider Girls' last engage. This is one of my absolute favorite songs that they've ever released. One of my absolute favorite singles that they've ever put out because everything coming together for it is amazing. You can see the, the new member is uh, Akita Chisato and she is the representative for Wizard. Amazing, amazing singer. You can see she's wearing the Wizard Driver and these are the last engaged suits. Very like, they have the collar and the color of their respective rider and the little gloves. And like, I love these outfits a lot. I really do. This single comes with Last Engage and Mystic Liquid. Uh, Last Engage being, I believe, the theme for Flame Style, Kamen Rider Wizard, and Mystic Liquid being the theme for Kamen Rider Wizard, Water Style. Water Style. I don't know why I said it like that. I had something in my mouth. And the DVD actually comes with the music videos for both Mystic Liquid and Last Engage, which is, which is nice because usually the, the DVDs only come with one clip, but this one comes with two music videos, so very, very cool. Again, I love the aesthetic of... Uh, last engage it's very pretty and it just makes me very happy because this is when i got last engage i really started collecting and this is the cd disc and on the back side i believe the dvd is almost exactly the same yeah kind of sort of it's gray but still the same sort of design structure righty so th this is the very very first release that i ever picked up i remember when i bought this uh, i used to go to cg uh, cd japan a lot, which is a site that sells like imported CDs, DVDs, stuff like that. And they would always sell their stuff through them uh, more often. And I remember going on the site and getting this. This is uh, just the beginning. This was also during the Wizard era. And these, oh my gosh, <sighs> the just the beginning outfits. Look at that. Look at that. These suits and then the, the sort of knee-high socks that all match their rider colors. So I, I love it. I love it a lot. Long boots, the tie. It, it's so unique. I, I, I don't know who designed these, but uh, their outfits, especially during the Wizard era, were unbelievable. Uh, yeah, again, this is the very first CD release that I ever got from uh, For the Rider Girls back in, I don't remember what year it was. I, I must have been freshman in high school. I believe. I, I could be completely wrong. But this release comes with Just the Beginning and Play for Tomorrow as well as Perfect Game. I don't remember that song at all. <laughs> I really don't. I actually forgot this had three songs on it. I never put on Perfect Game. I don't know why. I just, maybe I heard it and just didn't really like it. But I, for the life of me, I don't remember what it sounded like. Being that this was the first thing that I got from them, I played it all the time. Every day, it was legitimately, not an exaggeration, every single day, I would play this CD. I would put it on my phone and play for tomorrow. Play for tomorrow. Like, I I loved it. Loved it, loved it, loved it, loved it. I believe it's the theme for Flame Dragon, I think. Just the beginning is. 
Um, I could be completely wrong. Okay. <laughs> this one, I didn't put in that much either for some reason. This is also Wizard, of course, it's going in order. So this is Go Get Em. This is uh, the next release that they put out for Wizard. As I just said, they put out a lot of stuff during the Wizard era. Like this absolutely was their biggest peak. That doesn't make sense, but go get him. And uh, you can see Isaka is, or Hitomi is doing the, the O's transformation pose, which I think is really cool. I've never really been too fond on this cover. For some reason, this cover just does not really do it for me. It's too much, I think. Too many filters and it, it just looks kind of strange. Uh, this CD comes with Go Get Him and Let's Go. I don't remember that song, <laughs> but Go Get Him is one of the themes for the dragon forms and wizard, I believe. Um, it, it's all right. The, the song is okay. The album cover is okay. This was not one of my favorite CD releases that they put out. I just got it essentially because one, I needed the music video to have um, uh, in my, my hard drive, but also because I didn't have it and I wanted to have it. I wanted everything. So I, I got it almost out of obligation. Also because, first of all, here's the CD. The backing for the, the CD is so beautiful. I love this cover. I actually need to scan it. Like, look at that. Isn't that so cool? It's got all the members right there at the bottom, as well as their respective writer. When they were respecting, wow, when they, <laughs> when they were respecting writers, when they were representing writers, they stopped after a while and we're going to get to that when we get to that. But when they were representing writers, I feel like that was their, their biggest, that was their visual identity. Uh, and that probably contributed to why they stopped a little bit. But I loved that. It made for such a pretty design when it came to, to different marketing and, and promotion, like that kind of thing. It's, it's so nice to see them together. And even still today, the members that are still there have so much respect for the writers that they uh, represented. And I just, I, I wish that they never stopped <laughs> because it's so pretty, like stuff like this. I, I think I had this as my wallpaper on my computer for a good while. Um, very, very nice. That's, that's the best thing about the Go Get Em release is that backing. Alrighty, so now we're getting to their albums. Now, th this is one of my favorite albums of all time across all artists, and I used to pop this in all the time, all the time, all the time, to the point where I actually got the CD version and the CD and DVD version, which are the same thing, but one just has a DVD. So this is Alteration. This is also one of the themes for, no, I'm sorry, this is Alteration itself was the theme for all Dragon and Common Rider Wizard with like the form where they're all combined together. Uh, it's a self-titled album. It's a, well, it's an album titled under, it's titled after a song and it has a bunch of songs that they released before for like Forte and, and Wizard, but it has like a lot of uh, like original tracks as well. And this again was their very first album and I love just about every song on this album. If I put this album in, there's not a single song I think I would skip, except for Let's Go Rider Kick and V3. Those two covers are on this album. I don't know, <laughs> but uh, I, I just, I love this album a lot. It's so just exactly what I would want from them. Just them singing together. They have, some members have like songs where they sing by themselves, which I think is really nice. It's a nice little break of pace. And again, some of these members, I, I don't remember if they were like trained as singers growing up or if they, even really wanted to sing uh, growing up, but they all sound pretty nice on this album. And this was the point where I really started to grow to 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 understand each of their personalities and, and who they are as people. And I, I grew attached to them. And Alteration really was a culmination of all of that. I, I loved it, I loved it, I loved it. Uh, this album has Accelerate to the Eternal, Alteration, and Last Engage, Borderline, Prisoner, Mr. Notice, uh, the Let's Go Rider Kick and V3 covers, Just the Beginning, Survive, Saite, Ima Demo, uh, Girls Anthem, which became like an anthem for the group, and uh, Heavy Metal Strikes Back, which is an, ex an extra track. I love this song a lot. Um, they performed it not too terribly much live, but uh, again, this album is amazing. This one right here that I'm holding is the CD only version. So I would take this one, oh, hello. <laughs> I would take this one with me whenever I go in the car and drive somewhere where would go to work or the store. It would be this version that I would take with me. This right here is the CD and DVD version. I apologize if it looks a little dusty. So again, the same thing. The cover is 
different. I like the cover on this one better just, just because you see pretty much all of them. You see the drivers and everything. And I just think this cover is very, very well done. It's very simple. Not too much going on. It's, again, it's the same thing. The DVD, uh, I remember enjoying the DVD a lot because at the time I didn't really have too much in terms of their releases. So like the DVD was very helpful because it had five music videos. It has the music videos for Last Engage, Just the Beginning, Saita, Mystic Liquid, and Play for Tomorrow. So it was very, very helpful in uh, helping me to, to collect the music videos and everything. So there is that. This one I wouldn't really take with me all that much. Alteration. Oh, I didn't point out the, they, they have a logo. They, they Again, they changed the logos here and there. So the logo for Wizard at the time was this sort of dragon circling around the KRGS uh, wording. So very, very nice. And I believe that's the last. No, it's not. There's one more. There's one more release that was during the Wizard era. That's not really Wizard specifically, but uh, I'll show you guys. So this is Shock, Shocker, Shockist, an amazing song. I love this song so, so much. This was when they were, actually, I don't remember exactly what was going on in the world of Common Rider when this release came out, but they were doing an, a, a release where they are designed and sort of impersonating Shocker members, <laughs> or like the Shocker army. And it was very unique. It was very interesting. Something that they, I don't think I've ever done since. Uh, but it, it's very uh, unique again. And uh, they do have a song, the next one over. It, it comes with uh, Shock Shocker Shockist and Rider Real Respect, which is like a an antithesis to the Shocker song they put out. Uh, the third song is Roller Coaster Days. This whole release, I forgot how much I love this release. It's so nice. I miss this group a lot. I really do, and what they used to be. And there's that, and on the back, it has them with their masks being taken off. Just a really nice aesthetic. Common Rider Girls remodeled for Shocker Girls. I forgot about that. They do have their own Shocker logo and they have little hearts underneath. So love it. I love it. I love it. I love the disc too. Uh, there is the CD and I believe the DVD is pink. I remember wanting the CD and DVD release for this a lot because um, I'm sorry, I, I wanted the CD only version of this a lot because uh, the the album cover for that, CD cover for that was very, very nice. So there's Shocker Girls. So now we're approaching the next album. We're not there yet, but we are getting close to it. So this next release is part of the Gaim era. And you'll see that with the Gaim era, it has all the previous members from before, but they added a new one, uh, Tomomi Sumi Jenna. This is the first release for Gaim. This was uh, EXA, Exciting by Attitude which was, it wasn't a theme for anything really. It was just in the beginning of the show, they would play this song, you know, exciting by attitude. Beautiful, beautiful outfits. You can see Gaim is on the upside there. You can turn it around. Very, very nice. They're all sitting in a circle, Sakura flowers all over the place. The, uh, let me say, let me say, the Wizard and Gaim aesthetics for Kamen Rider Girls were all so iconic to me. There's them on the back and there's, the newest member, Jenna, in the center there, and her Sengoku driver. I love this song. This comes with uh, Exciting by Attitude, the TV version, and Reckless World, which was my favorite song for a long time. I love the motivational aspect of it. Uh, it used to make me cry. <laughs> so, EXA, Exciting by Attitude, not too terribly much to say. I just like this release a lot. There's the CD with a bunch of flowers and everything. The DVD is not too far off but they are black instead you can actually see uh well yeah you can you can see it well enough here the logo at the top is the gaim logo that they had during the gaim era for the group it has like a an orange surrounded by a little i don't know what that is but it's it's a nice sort of design i don't know what you would call it oh i didn't mention this uh the shocker girls thing i have like a little card this came with the release it's just like a little sort of cardstock print, but it's it's pretty nice. I've held on to it. I don't know why <laughs> or how I haven't lost it, but it's just a nice little cardstock piece that has them on it. I don't know. 
Alrighty, so here's where things get really interesting. This is their next album. This was called Exploded. Now, Exploded, they released in three parts. There is a Type A, a Type B, and a Type C. And you already know, I got all of them. Now, each of these releases are very slightly different. Um, type C is the CD-only version, but it comes with a photo book that has a bunch of them when they did a photo shoot with their own common writers. And it, it's, it's very weird how they, they laid this out. And I know why they laid it out like this, because they wanted everyone to collect everything. So the, the one that you would think has the least amount of content ends up having a lot more content than you would expect. So this is the CD only version. This is type C, I believe. And this one, I believe was the first one I got just because it was the least expensive at the time. Again, I was in high school, so I didn't really have much in terms of making money. <laughs> but th again, this is type C. I love this cover. This is the best cover for Exploded. The, the other two are just sort of borderline the same, but uh, not the same as this, but like, they're not as interesting. So this is the, the Exploded CD cover. Love it, love it, love it. Again, them with their writers added so, so much in terms of color, in terms of, there's a lot going on, but it's not too much going on. Uh, the logo for uh, the Gaim era is in the back, but not too much to where it's like overbearing, but just enough so you can see it. All the writers are posed and they all just look amazing. There is the back of the CD cover. I didn't, I remember not really enjoying the music on this one as much as Alteration. I like it, it wasn't bad, of course, but I, I didn't really find myself putting it in nearly as much just because I, I didn't really resonate it with it as much. This CD, or sorry, this album comes with Exploded, Warning, Burning, Exciting by Attitude, Toki no Hana, which was a theme for the Jinba forms in Kamen Rider Gaim. Uh, Atomic Girl, Go Get Em, Days, Primary Colors, Climax Jump, Erica Form, which is a cover of the Deno theme song. Again, covers, covers, covers. Uh, Shock Shocker Shockist, Mission Complete, Overdrive Generation, Love Under Virginia. I, d I don't remember why. <laughs> and then the bonus track, it has a bonus track. Uh, it comes with Dragon Road 2014, which I think Dragon Road was a song by someone else. I don't remember. Uh, Days, the Mitsuki version, and Primary Colors rewriting. It's, it's a rewritten version of the song that's on the same album, I guess. I don't know. This whole album is kind of strange. Uh, you'll see I, I mentioned Days twice. Days was a song that was sung by different members, depending on what release of Exploded you had. So this one, Primary, uh, wow. Days was sung by three or four members in the original version. Then there's a version that Mitsuki made where it's just her singing. I think the next exploded version has like someone else singing. You'll see, but it was very strange. Now here's something I didn't really understand. This release for Exploded has the cover backwards. I don't know why. So th this is the actual CD. It was in a slipcase, of course. This is the CD front. This is the back. I don't know why they did this. It it's very, oh no, I do, I do, I do. Never mind. They wanted the whole photo as part of the back, as opposed to like the front where it would be cut off by the little, the spine here, but there's the CD, very plain. Uh, exploded was just white, essentially, or at least this version was. So not too much there. And here's what's so interesting. I might scan some of these photos. I don't know. I'll have to think about it if I'm not too lazy. Look at this. So this is a photo shoot that they did for Exploded. And I believe at the time they were doing something in Thailand. I think, and they're wearing the Reckless World outfits uh, work, uh, for the music video that they did for Reckless World. I love these outfits a lot. So there's Chisato with Wizard. They did some shots where they were together with uh, each other's riders, just goofing off. Uh, they're really nice photos too. Um, there is Erika with Den O, sword form. Very, very nice. They all did it. They all have their photos in here. Now, Yasuda with Blade. This is the yellowed helmet version <laughs> of Blade. Just really, really nice photos, I think. I used to look through this photo book a lot because I, I would try and, like, I always wanted to try and draw humans uh, back when I was younger, and I wasn't good at it at the time. And I would try and draw the members with their riders. And again, just very, very, very nice photos. Here's what I was saying again about the, the belt straps. Uh, being the respective color of the rider, very, very nice. And yeah, just 
th this release coming with this photo shoot and this photo book is amazing, I think, just because it adds so, so much. These are rare photos, and I just, I, I miss this era. I miss this time frame, you know, where I was when this came out. It's just so iconic to me. Alrighty, so this is, I don't remember which one this one is. This one's type A, I believe. Yes, yes. So this is type A. This is exploded type A and uh, a, pretty, a pretty nice album cover. Them standing in front of an explosion. They actually filmed them doing this explosion shot. I don't remember what it was on, if it was on like a separate DVD release or maybe I have it. Uh, I have it somewhere, but yeah, they, they filmed themselves standing in front of explosion like writers and very much just an homage to tokusatsu in general. They're wearing the exploded outfits. It's a nice cover. They never really did this again, <laughs> but it's uh, it's very nice. Now, the, the CD itself comes with, I believe, the exact same songs. The bonus tracks are different. Dragon Road 2014 is still here, but the days on the bonus tracks are... Days is sung by Kaori instead, who was Kiva. And Primary Colors, uh, Hitomi version, who was... Uh, uh, I'm sorry, no, Mitsuki version. Yes. <laughs> uh, the DVD is very interesting because it comes with a lot of different music videos. It's got the music video for Go Get Em, Shock Shocker Shockist, Exciting by Attitude, a short version of the Reckless World music video. I, I don't know. Uh, there it is. Okay, so the exploded documentary, which is them filming in front of the this right here. I think they had a little bit more footage uh, aside from that. Uh, Shocker Girls, it has like a Shocker Girls thing. I don't remember what it was. It was like an interview type thing that they were doing for the, the Shocker uh, release, as well as uh, the music video for Shock Shocker Shockist, uh, Shocker Girls sort of event thing. They were doing like a, uh, I think, wow, what was it? It's been so long since I've seen this. They were doing like a CD autograph signing and taking photos with fans and they were interviewing each other because they were separated into different Shocker teams among the group at the time. Very interesting. I haven't thought about it in a long time. And then one last thing for Exciting by Attitude. I think this was the sort of behind the scenes of the music video. Again, it's been so long since I've seen this. Uh, oh, shoot. I'm reliving all of this. This has two DVDs. The second DVD has the music video for the short version of Break the Shell, which is a song that we're going to be getting to in a second because I have, the, the next releases are that. But... Yeah, th wow, I haven't thought about any of this in so long. I forgot just how much content was in here. This is the inside, just the same album cover. The back is the rest of the explosion. There is the inside. It's red this time as opposed to the white. That was type C. There was one of the DVDs. There's the other one. They were very much advertising Common Rider Batch Ride War, which was a PS3 game. I don't remember when the PS3 came out, but it was... A very important game for Ryder. It's one of the best games that Ryder has ever released. Um, and uh, they, they did theme songs for those games. And some of those songs ended up on the albums as well. Alrighty. And this is Exploded Type B. This is probably the most important album to me in terms of their discography. Because I remember when I first got into Common Rider Girls, there was a concert they did called Rockin' Kicks Nigo. And it was like a two-hour concert from what I remember. And I used to watch it on miscellaneous sites because no real site had like the full concert. So it had to hop between sites and stuff like that for a while until I was able to afford to get this. And this release has the DVD concert on it. And when I got it, I was able to watch it in, in like really good quality, DVD quality. I was like ecstatic and I would play it every single day. Like I watched it so, so much. And it was my favorite concert for a long time. So this is type B of exploded i my least favorite cover <laughs> because it's just the same thing from type a but just zoomed out and i don't think it looks good i think it just looks kind of there's a lot of open space that isn't used and it just it's it could be better but i mean what else are you gonna do uh, the cd is exactly the same as the first two uh, the bonus tracks this time are dragon road of course uh days sung by hitomi who's o's uh a song called feeling which is primary colors rewritten again but by chisato the music was weird in this era and the two discs are the concert uh, where they did 
a bunch of songs. They they did a song called Love Wars, but on the back they spelled it with an A instead of O for love, <laughs> which I think is hilarious. I'm not going to read through all the tracks that they did in the set list. It's not really all that important, but just, uh, just know it was a wonderful concert. Okay, so this is a photo book that has photos from the Rock and Kicks Neo concert. Wow. Wow. Okay, I do remember this. Again, this was my favorite concert for a long time because I was such a huge, huge fan of their work. There's now, are there any pictures of the writers in here? I don't think there are. Off the top of my head, there's Chisato with her infinity style ring. She loves being part of this crew. I remember when she first joined, she was so happy. So, so happy to be representing Wizard and just seeing that emulated in like the performance and stuff was so, so heartwarming. I loved it. This was also when Jenna was introduced. She was introduced in the Rock and Kicks Nico concert and they unveiled her and Gaim came out and it was very nice. So they, they put that in the release. So there's that. There is the CD. Is this also, no, it's the lyric booklet. Whoops. Okay. And let's see here. Is the DVD, yep, the DVDs are right there as well. Just absolutely wonderful. It's a behind the scenes of the concert as well, where I think they were preparing Jenna to be uh, shown at the, the, the concert for the first time. So very, very nice release. Not my favorite album by them by a long shot, but uh, definitely still wonderful. I apologize if I keep sliding all over the place. I don't know why my chair keeps moving. So this right here is another weird time. <laughs> this is Common Rider Girls Break the Shell. So as I said, they, they did music for the different Common Rider games that were coming out. And this was one of them. This was a theme for, I believe it was Batch Ride War 2, I think, on the PS3. I don't remember exactly which one it was. It was one of them. And they did the theme song for that. And uh, here's Break the Shell. Now, there are three different versions of this single release. I have all three. But each one came with one or two different songs. And I think one came with the DVD. But the, the, the biggest distinction is the, the album cover. So this one has Erica, Kaori, Jenna, and uh, Hitomi on the front. And this CD comes with Break the Shell, Scarlet Savage, and The World, Everybody's Jump, which is, they're all amazing songs. I think Scarlet Savage and The World are two of my favorite songs of all time. Two of them, not saying they are. Anyways, <laughs> this is a... Yeah, again, this is a very interesting release time frame for them because they, they were very much just making sure everyone collected everything. So they would release different versions of the same release to get you to buy everything. This one came with a code for the game that you can get on the Wii U and you can unlock something. I think you can unlock Gaim and Baron or get something for them or something like that. I don't know. I never had the game, so I don't really know much about it. This one's the CD only version. I don't remember what type this is, but it's it's one of them. I don't really know. I used to know, but it doesn't really matter anymore. So there's break the shell type whatever. We'll just say that that one's type A and this one is type B. So this is Common Rider Girls Break the Shell type B. Uh, again, just a different version of the same single. This single comes with Break the Shell, Scarlet Savage, and Toki no Hana, the TV version. Again, the theme for the Jinba forms in Common Rider Gaim, but this time it's just like the TV version, the short one. It's sure, I guess. This one's also the CD only version. This was very weird because it, two of these only come with the CD. Just the other one came with two other songs. This one comes with two songs from the first one and then a short version of some other song. It's like, why would you ever get this one <laughs> if you weren't a collector? But there's that uh, Mitsuki, Nao, and Chisato are on the front of this one. I like the aesthetic of this one just because the side is white. And I think it fits better that way. And the inside, not too much to write home about and that's i guess type b and this right here is common writer girls break the shell we'll say it's type c uh this one i feel it's even more bizarre because this one comes with break the shell scarlet savage and then the dvd so it doesn't even come with like three songs that are different it, it comes with a dvd that has the break the shell music video on it this one's the only one that has that and you can see they're all on the front here and uh, yeah, I, I mean, really, th there's not much to say about this just because they're all variations of the same thing. They don't really come with 
enough extras, I think, on each version to warrant them being three different versions. I feel like they could have just made one, had all the songs on it that were supposed to be on it, which is like four or five, uh, called a mini album and then put the DVD with it. That seemed like it would have made the most sense to me because I wouldn't imagine. I feel like they had like a lot of extra stock of the other two releases just because they're not all that different. I feel like someone would get one and then realize that they got the wrong one that doesn't have that much on it and then just like either sell it and try to get the other one. I don't know. I feel like they, they could have avoided having so much extra stock of this by just putting them all together, but there's Break the Shell. Now here's where things get very, very bizarre for Common Rider Girls. At this time, they weren't making as much music. They weren't doing too terribly much when it came to the show. As I said, Wizard was their peak. Gaim was still just as big, but not as big as Wizard. I think Wizard, they did at least like six or seven songs for the show that were in the show. With Gaim, they did like three, two or three, including uh, the, the game songs. So that's like four, three or four. And when Common Rider Drive came around, they did one. They did one song for Drive and they added a new member. They added a new member. Eventually, they lost two. <laughs> so things were getting shaken up a little bit. So this next release is called Next Stage. This is when they added uh, Ayaka Kuroda. And she didn't represent a rider. As you can see on the cover, none of them are wearing the drivers. This was a very, very big shakeup for the group. And what I think is probably one of their biggest mistakes, because... It, it took away a lot of the visual identity that the group had. Not that they needed to represent a writer or have writer material on them to be visually distinct, but with how long they'd been around, that was their visual identity. And when they shook it up by doing that, their outfits themselves also sort of fell apart because whereas they used to be color coordinated, now they're not. They don't have a writer, so why would it need to be color coordinated? You know what I mean? So this release is not my favorite by a long shot. I like the songs enough on it, but everything surrounding this release, as well as just the songs themselves not really being like super amazing, made this release not that fun for, for me. Uh, I remember this time period, Common Rider Drive, I remember asking myself like, when are they gonna do music? You know, when are they gonna do music for the show? And it didn't come into the tail end. This release came uh, with Next Stage, Girls Be Ambitious, and Unlimited Drive, which of course is the theme song for Common Rider Drive type Trideron. That's the only song that they did for Drive. And I feel like it's very sort of disappointing in a way. I don't know what was going on behind the scenes of this release, but I remember being a little bit disappointed by it because it's the aesthetic is not interesting to me at all. It doesn't really... It, it, there's not really much going on <laughs> with this. Uh, th this one comes with the DVD. It comes with the DVD music video for Next Stage, Girls Be Ambitious, making like behind the scenes for Girls Be Ambitious, and a bonus movie, which has the last performance that they ever did filmed wearing their drivers. The rest of the group is, and it's the last time that they wore the drivers while doing a performance, which I miss so, so much. Girls Be Ambitious weirdly enough is a theme song for i believe a pachinko game that came out around this time it, it was a common writer pachinko game which is why i think it's so bizarre because it, it doesn't it's very weird to have that for a theme song for writer so th there's next stage i didn't really like this era all that much it, it was very sort of strange i'm looking down here i missed an album we're gonna get to that this is the most important album here and I missed it. Give me one quick second. I very vividly remember when this album came out because this album came out right after I got into the group, like in terms of like following them and collecting their stuff. And I waited so long for it. I waited so long for this album. I remember buying it. And at the time I didn't have money like that. Like I, I was in high school and I, I didn't, I couldn't pay for anything really. I was only surviving off of the little YouTube money that I would get. So I remember buying this and I couldn't do EMS. I had to do Sal, which if you've ever bought using Sal shipping method, you will be waiting for a long time because they don't send things out on a plane and just send it to your house. If it's from Japan, they put it on a boat and they have to wait for that boat to fill up with someone with other people's packages before the boat leaves. And 
Sal is also notorious because a lot of the time, most of the time, there's no tracking number. So if your package gets lost, you're not even going to know that it got lost. You can be waiting, thinking that it's coming in when in reality it fell off the boat like months ago. So I was so scared with this thing coming in because I, I didn't know what to expect. I Like every single day, I kid you not, this is not an exaggeration. Every day I would get off the bus. I would get off the bus and immediately go to the mailbox to see if it was there, knowing that it probably wasn't. And every day that it didn't come in, I'd be so upset and I would put in uh, just the beginning <laughs> and play the play for tomorrow music video just because it helped calm me down because I was so upset. I was very, very sad. I remember when it came in, I was excited and I did a, an unboxing for it years and years ago. That might've been like 10 years ago. But th this out, this release was so important to me and still is for that fact. This is super best. This is an, uh, like a compilation album that they put out I don't remember what year it was, but it was before Drive, for sure. It was before Ayaka came in. Uh, Ayako, sorry, um, as, which is why she's not on the cover. She wasn't part of the group yet. And it's a very, very nice compilation album. It has a lot of the songs that you would expect to be on it, and it has a few extra songs as well. And uh, the aesthetic for this album is really nice as well. You can see they're still wearing their drivers right there this album actually came with a lot of content i was not expecting that when it came out but album cover right there and it comes with a booklet with all of them in it and a little message and signature as well uh some photos from thailand at the time they did like a thailand thing where they were doing concerts as well as little uh video missions i'll get to that in a second but yeah this this was a very big time for them there's jenna right there they're wearing like sort of, I don't know what you would call it, like military <laughs> outfits, which I think, like I like that a lot. Now this release, uh, I unfortunately got into a car accident in 2017. This CD was in the car with me and when I got hit, this CD bounced off the passenger seat and slammed into the, the glove compartment. And because of that, it destroyed the case. So there's that and like the, the inside, the whole thing comes off. There's that. I, that makes me a little bit sad, but I, I never wanted to get another one because it's so uh, significant of that time period for me. There's the CD right there, and uh, there's the booklet, and the, the you don't really need to see the DVD. It's, there's not much there, but the DVD comes with uh, missions. I call them missions because they, they would go to Thailand, and I guess their production crew would give them uh, different things to do to explore Thailand. They'd go to a shop or a restaurant. And they have to do this. They have to do this. And they would all do it separately. So there's like seven or eight different of these missions. And watching through all of them, I'd watch them all the time because they were so interesting to me. They were very helpful when it came to me learning Japanese as well because I'd just be watching them and listening to them do all these things and trying to sort of understand word for word. I would write things down and, uh, you know, the kanji and everything. And it was very helpful. And I, I used, again, I used to watch it all the time. And uh, I think the most significant thing about this release for me is that it not only came with those, it came with the music video for Break the Shell and a behind the scenes thing that they did in Thailand, as well as the music video for Believe in My Flush, which is my absolute favorite song that they've ever did. It's a very, very beautiful song. Uh, it, it's, a, it's exactly the kind of music that I listen to uh, outside of them. And I, I was just very excited to see that uh, it came with it. This is the only release that has that music video on it. And I think to this day, there's no real release of that music video online in good quality. It's only on this DVD. And I'm glad that I have it. I can say that I have that. You know, some of this, it feels like almost lost media. Um, even though it's not lost, it's just nobody bought it. <laughs> like nobody bought it and like, and or no one's actively seeking it out. So it, it's kind of obscure, but I'm glad that I have it because of that. Now, it wasn't until years later that I got Super Best again, but this time it's the CD only version. And I got it because I, first of all, I love, love, love the CD only cover. This is my favorite cover for Super Best just because I love, again, seeing them with their writers add so much in terms of color, in terms of composition. And this was the last time we'd see them with their writers in a music release. And they, they all look amazing in the Super Best aesthetic, the writers all surrounding. I just, I love it a lot. Now the songs are exactly the same, except for the second disc, which comes with a uh, new song called Zutto Zutto, which was the last song that Kaori Kiva, where is she at? Can I point to her? 
uh, right there. That's the last song that she sung for the group before she left uh, a year or two later. Uh, it, rather, it was right after this, I believe. Um, yeah, because she's not in Next Stage. So this was the last time that she sung with the group and uh, she graduated and uh, went to her own band, which was very nice. Um, but yeah, th this is the CD only version. doesn't really come with too much. I don't think, does it come with a booklet? Like a photo book? It does. Okay, it's the same photo book as before, but here we see them without their writers, which is, looking back on it, kind of symbolic because, this, again, was the last time we'd see them with their writers and a music release. So maybe they were preparing for that. But yeah, it's the same photo book that we just saw. And uh, they're, they're super best. The most important album that they released in terms of my own history with them. So love it a lot. Uh, yes. All righty. So going back again, right after next stage, we have Kamen Rider Girls Cho Girls. Omatase shimashita. Watashitachi Kamen Rider Girls Domoshimasu. In Harajuku. So this is Super Girls Call Us Common Writer Girls. This is a concert release for a concert that they did. I don't remember when, but it was after Next Stage. Uh, this is when two of the group members graduated. Now, who represented Common Writer Blade and Erica, who represented Common Writer Den O, uh, graduated in this concert. I didn't. I didn't point at her. I, I was just putting my finger up. That's not her. This is Erica down here. The the big thing is that they they graduated during this performance. Uh, and I mean, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a concert. Like it's a really nice concert. I wish it wasn't on DVD. I wish it was on like a Blu-ray or something. They wouldn't do Blu-ray until a little bit later, but this concert, they cover a lot of the, the key songs that you would expect them to cover, uh, from their discography exploded unlimited drive, believe in my flush, which I believe is the only filmed time that they performed this song. Uh, let's go right kick 2011 mission complete last engage. Girls Be Ambitious, Next Stage, Reckless World, Alteration, Toki no Hana, uh, Shock Shocker Shock is Just the Beginning, Zut the Zut Play for Tomorrow, Saite, uh, LOL, EXA, uh, Koi no Raida Kik, Heart no Henshin Belt, and Girls Anthem. Uh, now what's cool is Kaori, who, played, who was Kiva, uh, had graduated by this time, but she actually came out and did a surprise performance during Zut the Zut I, I remember. Uh, so she's in this release, which I think is very nice. The last time she performed with the group, uh, in a release. And uh, yeah, there, 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 what's weird to me is that there's not really much writer branding on this concert at all. Like, I think the writers do come out. Uh, no, they don't actually. I don't remember. Do they? I don't think they do. Yeah, there's no real writer branding aside from the songs that they're singing. Like, not on the cover, not inside, not in the performance at all. There's the DVD, it's pink. I believe this booklet also comes with, uh, yes. The booklet does come with the different photos from the concert. Here in the concert, they did explain why they stopped wearing the rider belts. And I believe it was to the to the effect of someone had said that, uh, I don't know if it was management or what, but they said that it would be better for them not to wear the belts or represent specific riders because in that way they'd be able to support and represent all writers as a whole, as opposed to being tied down to just one, which I understand at the same time, they were already doing that. You know, they were already representing all of the writers. It's just that they were representing a very specific one for themselves. You know, they were always, the whole point was that they are promoting common writer as a whole. You know, they would do music for games. They would do music for albums. They would do cameo appearances in the movies. So like they were always supporting the entire brand like that was the whole point it's just they each were designated with a specific writer from the show's history uh, i understand why they stopped i wish they didn't because i feel like the aesthetics and a lot of interest that people had in the group fell off after they did that there was a very strong decline when it came to that and it's really unfortunate uh, as i said before the members that are still around with the group still identify with their writers and they they do the writer poses they coordinate their colors now with those writers still even without the belts and uh, they they very much reminisce on that but i feel like that was a very big misstep when it came to to that and i i know i feel like that was not their decision but um yeah just very unfortunate but very nice concert that this was keeping with weird times this is the very first release without 
Now and Erica, Deno and Blade. So this is uh, moving on, uh, Russian crash and moving on. I don't know why the CD was labeled with both the songs that it comes with on the front as opposed to just one. This was released, I believe I was in 11th grade when this came out. So I was nearing my high school years, nearing the end of my high school years, I'm sorry. And uh, moving on is a song that they did and they had a music video for it and they're wearing these white outfits right here. Russian Crash is a theme song that they did for a mobile game that I used to play all the time in high school. I don't remember what it was called. Common Rider Battle Rush, I think was the name of it. But it was like a, it was just a game where you'd play and let the riders fight and watch them fight. You give them little power ups and stuff. It was really nice. But that was a theme song for that game. And Russian Crash is amazing. Moving on is good. I don't really care for it too much though. It just is what it is. The CD comes with Russian Crash, Moving On, of course, the instrumentals for those two songs, and a bonus track called Girls Talk Volume 1. I don't think I've ever listened to that all the way through. It's like a podcast sort of thing where they're talking about stuff. I, so maybe there's some interesting things in there. I don't know. I was never really interested in listening to it all the way through, so I just didn't. The DVD comes with the music video for Moving On and uh, Doc. Documento Honolulu. Okay, so they went to Honolulu, Hawaii, and they did some marathon thing where they were running a marathon and they were promoting Common Rider Battle Rush. Very strange. It was a very <laughs> strange time uh, for them, but they did like a, a little special movie documentary making behind the scenes thing for that. Yes, they were there for that. Now, fun fact, I actually own two versions of this album. One of them got destroyed. I don't remember what happened. But one of them got like really badly beaten up. Like the case was terrible. It was falling apart. I, maybe that was with me when I got into my accident. I don't remember. But I remember having to get, this is a new one. This is the newest one. I threw the other one away because the case was bad. But also this came out during x -Aid. This was Kamen Rider x -Aid's time. Uh, you may notice I skipped over Kamen Rider Ghost. They didn't do anything for Kamen Rider Ghost. That's why I was saying them making music and doing things sort of slowed down after uh, Drive, or after Gaim, rather. So the, they completely skipped over Ghost, didn't do any music for that, and they came back with X-Aid. And that leads us to some of the last releases from them. So this is the Invincible album. Now this album is very akin to Exploded in that there were very like, different versions, slightly different versions. There were three different ones. I don't remember which ones was A, B, and C, of course, again. So we're just gonna go by what I call A, Type A. <laughs> now, Mitsuki, who was the Forze representative, graduated before this. She graduated after Russian Crash moving on. So she's not part of this. As you can see, the group members are very much slimmed down in terms of how many of them there are. Uh, Hitomi, Jenna, Shitato, and Ayako are the only ones remaining. And they would get even shorter not too long after this. <laughs> so this is the, Invis the, 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 the Invincible album. This cover shoot, I believe, happened in Common Rider the Diner? I could be completely wrong about that. It looks like Common Rider the Diner. Mm, I don't really know. The shocker chairs there and that little top thing over top. The aesthetic for this album, I don't know if they really knew what they wanted to do. I don't know why Ichigo is there. Ichigo has no reason to be there at all. None of the songs have anything to do with him aside from the... Nope, I'm looking at the album list. It has nothing it has anything to do with him at all. So I, I don't know why he's here. I, I really don't. Like, they could have very easily had x -Aid here. At least x -Aid was airing. Ichigo has nothing to do with this. Uh, so it, it, it feels like when they stripped the rider belts, again, the aesthetics just sort of took a hit as well because now it's like, okay, well, what do we do now? <laughs> you know, like, like, what are we supposed to do? The, the outfits are nice. Not my favorite outfits that they've worn for a release, but they look all right. So this album comes with uh, covers of older songs that they did. They were redoing songs that they did before but now with the current amount of group members that there are, you know, it used to be eight, now there's like four. So they went back and did older songs as well as covering songs that were in the show at the time that they didn't write. So the, this release comes with the Kamen Rider Girls version of Battle Game, which was a theme from Kamen Rider X8, I think one of the movies, I could be wrong, uh, a song that they made called Reason 4, uh, and then there's Time of Victory, which I th think was the theme for Kamen Rider X8 Muteki Gamer. I don't remember actually i think did it play in the show that's a fuzzy fuzzy that's a foggy memory for me i feel like it was played in the show i uh, weird time 
Next stage. Next stage is on this album, People Game, the Common Rider Girls version, which was a song sung by the character Poppy in X Aid. Future Capture, Kazuna Mukoe. Uh, this was one of the songs that they did that has lyrics. It's a song from X Aid, from the X Aid OST, where it's just an instrumental. It's just a background track for X Aid, but they added lyrics to it. This one, and I think Time of Victory might also be that. I could be wrong. No, I'm sorry. Stormy Story is. Stormy Story is also a song on this. I'm sorry. I keep jumping from, from thing to thing. I'm like trying to remember stuff. Moving on is on here. Let's try Together. What, okay, so Let's Try Together was a theme song for the Mighty Brothers from Kamen Rider x Aid. Uh, Yo Solo, Girls Anthem. I think that's a, re, a re-sung version. And a bonus track called Let's Dancing. Okay, Let's Go Rider Kick is also on here. I think it's like a remix, redone version. That's the only thing that points to why Ichigo may be on this album cover. But even so, they put Let's Go Rider Kick on other releases before, and Ichigo was never a part of it. So I, I really just think they didn't know what they wanted to do. There's the back of it. This one comes with a DVD. Uh, it's a shortened version of a concert that they did that's also on another Invincible release. But th- th- this one just has like a, a few, like the the highlights from the concert, I guess. Uh, and it's a DVD. It's not a, a Blu-ray. Is it? I don't think it is. There's the inside. Type A has a purple disc. Uh, I believe the other releases have different colors. The disc 2 is green. So that's pretty nice. This is Common Rider Girls Invincible Type B. Here's the album cover. I like this album cover a lot more just because it's not so zoomed out. I don't appreciate that Ichigo is here because he's not here for a reason. <laughs> I feel like, again, if x Aid was on here, it would make so much more sense. This is the CD only version. Everything else is exactly the same. All the songs are the same. Uh, There's no additional anything. It's just, it's, it's just a different version, a lesser version of Invincible. There's the CD, even the CD is plain. It's like a a dingy gray brown sort of thing, whatever. I mean, it's cool they have their signatures on the disc, which is kind of nice, but not much to write home about on this one. This is one I would take in the car with me. Not that often. I didn't really ever put this release in all that often. Here we have Common Writer Girls Invincible Type C. Album cover is exactly what you would expect. The songs are exactly the same on the CD. This one actually has sun damage. I remember I would take this one with me originally in the car. And I think I left it out in the sun when I went to work one day. And like the, the case itself is not only sun damaged, but I think the tray on the inside is broken off so here's the the cover for the actual album for this one probably the worst version of it (laughs) i like the ichigo is posing but it's so zoomed out there's so much open space and it doesn't look all that great but it is what it is this one comes with a blu-ray and this was the full concert that they did at the time this was uh, partially to promote common writer x aid and this is the only concert that they've done where it has like a narrative it has like a like them coming out and singing songs. And then I think shocker warriors come in and they start fighting and then they have to get back up and fight again. And there's actually like a little health gauge at the bottom. It was kind of cool, but this is the only time they really did like a, a narrative for their concert, which I think was interesting. It's themed after X8. So it's called game start. This was in 2017, their seventh live show where it's like a big thing, I guess. Uh, Battle game, Let's Go Rider Kick 2011, just the beginning. Common Rider Forze music medley. So th- this concert, Mitsuki showed up in this concert. She did her last performance with the group during this concert, which was very significant. And she transformed with the driver, which I thought was very cool. And they sung a song called uh, Hero, which is amazing because it's, it's talking about like what it takes to be a hero, doing the best that you can and that kind of thing. And just a very, very nice send off. Timitsuki. Very, very nice concert. I love this concert a lot. I haven't like watched it in a long time, but I remember being very excited to see it and very pleased by it. There's the the red disc for the CD. I gotta be careful because the disc might come out. And it already did. Okay. There's the Blu-ray. This one is blue. Oh yeah, this one came with a booklet. This this booklet is cool because it it, it has the outfits for the Invincible era of the Rider Girls, and they're all in here. And it's, it's pretty nice. These outfits are pretty all right. I, I don't really hate them at all. They're just sort of okay. They're not my favorite at all. But I do like that they are uh, trying to, to more color coordinate with the previous writers. Ayako, of course, never had a writer. So her color is purple. Uh, but 
they they look pretty nice i like they have little capes uh you know you can see chisato doing like the wizard thing there <laughs> it's really nice them together with ichigo so invincible was a very strange time i remember anytime after exploded them releasing something felt very strange well maybe not exploded anytime after super best them releasing anything was kind of strange because I, I wasn't ever sure how i would feel about the release because it, it was never really something that i was super excited for it was just always something like oh, okay they're still making music you know at the time i was getting more into lisa who was another japanese artist that i was really into and i was growing my collection for that so whenever common rider girls would put something out i'm like huh okay you know and it just sort of passed by i still love the group and we're actually coming on to the last release or rather the most recent release that they put out, which was actually back in 2021. No, 2000. When did Zero One air? Was that 2019? This is where I really felt that they didn't really know what they wanted to do. Not the group members, but like management and just who had control over the group. Because this this is a mini album called Zero One. Zero Three Zero Eight Zero Four Zero One. I don't. To this day, I still don't know what those are referencing. I don't know if that's like a reference to something Common Rider or what. This mini album comes with a song called Proud of You, which was a song that they did with another group, I believe, for Common Rider Build back in like 2000, whatever. Build was coming out. Really good song. They actually, did, no, yes, uh, they did it for a game that Build was in. I don't remember what game it was, but they did a cover of Build Up, which was also a song for Common Rider Build. They did a new cover for Journey Through the Decade. The Decade theme song is on here. Uh, they did a cover <laughs> for Common Rider Ghost, the theme song. Uh, they did a cover. <laughs> this, this mini album is just covers, by the way. Uh, it's a song called Suki no something something Toki. I don't remember what song this is, uh, so I'm not even going to acknowledge it. Next New World and Endless Journey. This is probably my least favorite release that they've ever done because none of the songs were for me. I've already said that I'm not too big on the covers that they did because I just prefer them make their own music and do their own thing. This release, I pretty much only got out of obligation because I wanted to make sure that I owned everything that they did. And I'm, I'm not too excited about this one because there was not much going on. As you can see, Ayako graduated. So now there's three members left. These are, at the time of this recording, the last three members still with the group. Uh, Chisato, Isaka, wow. Chisato, Hitomi, and Jenna, uh, Wizard, O's, and Gaim, respectively. Uh, these outfits themselves I'm not too big on either. <laughs> They're just very sort of, uh, sort of retreads of what Superbest was for a little bit. Visually, the album itself is not great. I don't think the red, blue, and green really go with each other all that well. Here's the CD, just a black CD. I, I don't know. This whole time was very strange. I, I think this did come with a C, like a DVD at some point, but I didn't even bother getting it because I was like, I don't want to, whatever, <laughs> you know, and then it just sort of fell off. This is the last CD release that I have. This is, and really that's everything. That, that's everything that they put out so far. And uh, there hasn't been another CD music release since zero one, you know, it's Saber, Revise, Geats, all three of those, nothing, no music, no nothing. Um, so I, I don't know what the fate of the group is looking like right now. I feel like times have changed. Times are, are very much different from what they were back in 2011. So idol groups for writer isn't really that big anymore. I don't know how much they sold when it came to the music over the years. I mean, clearly enough to be in the show and, and doing stuff and still putting things out, but I feel like it's trickled off as of late and it's kind of unfortunate because again, these were the most important music artists in my life for a long time. And I just, I really miss that time period and, and what they were. Uh, but luckily, I mean, I still have all their music, so I, I can still go back and relive that anytime that I want to. So that's all I have for the music releases. When it comes to actual merchandise, I have a few shirts from their concerts that I got like secondhand that are in my closet that I don't really feel like getting out right now, but I do have some things right here. So this is a pin light from one of their concerts. They had a store for all of like a month. <laughs> they had a store where they were supposed to start selling things on it. They sold like two things and then they were done. Like they, they, they never updated it again. I think the site still might be up, but they just completely abandoned it after like two different 
items. But this is a pin light from that site. It's very dusty because I haven't brought it out in a while. Um, still works. It has a button. You can change to the different colors of the group, which I think is interesting. What's really cool is that it literally does have every color from the members at the time when this came out. This came out a while after a lot of the members had already moved on, but the colors are still there. So you've got Jenna, Gaim, uh, Chisato, Wizard. It says Mitsuki, Forze, uh, Kaori, Kiva, uh, Hitomi, Oz, and Pink, which I believe would have been Ayako. And then it, it flashes and stuff. Not too much to write home about. This was their newer logo. Ironically, and weirdly enough, out of everything here, the most expensive thing that I have uh, needs to be cleaned again because it's very like dusty and stuff. It has fingerprints, but the most expensive thing that I have here is this. This is a $300 belt buckle that was sold on the site that I just mentioned like a few minutes ago. This is a is the same belt buckle that they would wear in their concerts from like 2016 onward. They they're wearing it in this album cover. You can see there's the belt buckle there. They wore it in some other releases. Their outfits in the later years would have this belt buckle on it. I'm sorry, I'm looking for them now. Uh, they're wearing it in this album cover as well. I'll probably have pictures on screen, but they, they would wear this and it's a very like modified logo of their KRGS branding. And it's really nice. I, I used to wear it <laughs> to work with me and eventually I just stopped because I mean, it's a belt buckle. So like no one's really going to see it unless I flash my shirt up a little bit. But like, why would I ever do that? So it would just be sitting on a stand and uh, it's it's a very nice item. Like I like it a lot. I, I It's not worth $300. I feel like they were bugging when, when they did that, but it, it's a very interesting item. It's a very obscure sort of rare item now because I guarantee you they do not sell this anymore on their site. I don't think they even made that many because they probably knew they weren't going to sell that many, but it, it's a very interesting item, I think. And I'm, I'm just glad that I have it. You know, it's a very rare thing and I just, I have it sitting on my, my writer girl shelf. So there is one last thing that I want to show that is a very rare thing that I don't think a lot of people even know about. So this is the rarest common writer girls item that I have this right here. So this is a very small booklet years and years ago, back when wizard was airing, this was like during the middle of wizard or maybe even closer to the beginning, there was a book called Uchusen. It was like a magazine sort of thing. And they would it have a bunch of different issues over the years. I think they still run today. I could be completely wrong about that. But Uchusen was a tokusatsu magazine and they would have pages upon pages about the newest things coming out, toys, episodes, tokusatsu shows like Ultraman, Super Sentai, Kamen Rider. They were all in there. There was an issue, I believe it was issue 127, where it had an addendum sort of book and it was attached to the, the magazine and it was Common Writer Girls. And it's a very specific issue. You don't know how long I was tracking this down. It took me so long to find a copy of this on some weird off site that doesn't sell this magazine anymore, let alone this specific issue of Uchusen, which I still have over there. It came with this, and this was during, of course, the wizard era. Kamen Rider Garuzu, uh, okay, I'm sorry, uh, Uchusen volume 139 had this. And there is a bit of like water damage on the back. I've had this for a long time. I need to better protect it by getting like a, a book protector, sheet protector, something. If you remember, Common Run Rider as a show still does these detail of heroes books where they take pictures of the suit, the forms, the different uh, fabrics and stuff that are used to make the suit. Like it's a very sort of intensive look at the suits from Common Rider. They emulated that with this book and looking at the different let's uh wow last engage outfits from the time and i love this book so much because the photos in it are very nice you really get to sort of start to appreciate the work that went into making these suits like look at this look at these suits i think i've said earlier the last engage suits are my favorite outfits that they ever wore for the group like it's so just colorful and it's they're beautiful i love it a lot kiva or uh, kauri being my favorite because yellow is my favorite color and Kiva is amazing. I love Kiva. Uh, but th this book has individual photos for all of them. Well, here's another one. Here's another group shot of 
all of them. Again, this book is very rare. I don't see anyone ever talking about this book, anyone that really even has this book. And I'm, I'm very happy to, to own this book because it's, it's, again, it's a lot of the stuff like this feels like lost media when it really shouldn't be. There are a lot of the different last engaged suits or mystic liquid suits, if you'd want to call it that as well. Uh, there is Mitsuki doing the Forze Uchikita pose with the driver and a couple switches there. Really, really nice photos of the group uh, that were released. Uh, this photo shoot must have been really fun because especially during the concerts, we never saw them interacting with their drivers like at all. Like not playing with the cards or the, the lock seat, flipping it, like pressing buttons or anything. They would always just be static. And what was really weird to me always is that Erica, her Den O belt is not an actual Den O belt. It's the, the Legend Rider release where the lights don't change. It doesn't do anything. It, it's just, it's not the actual Den O belt. And, I, and she never had an actual one. I believe uh, now also her belt is the Legend Rider blade belt. I could be wrong about that, but yeah, that we, we used to never really see them messing around with their drivers, and in this book, they do. And I always thought that was very special. There's Kaori right there, and they all just look so happy at the time. There's Chisato, Wizard. Just a really, really nice, it has like little pages talking about, I believe their manager, uh, who they are, their releases at the time, as well as Common Rider releases from that time period, like the live shows and everything behind the scenes. Just, it's a short book, but it's a nice book. And I wish that they did more stuff like this because it's very unique and it's, I just love it a lot. I really, really do. So that's the rarest release that I have from the Common Rider Girls. And with that, that ends the collection. Like what, an hour, 20 minutes I'm gonna end up with? I don't know. Thank you for going through memory lane with me. I haven't looked at any of this stuff in years. And I hope it was interesting enough to where you stuck through the end because Again, this is very. This was a very important time period for me. I remember it very vividly. That late middle school, early high school time frame where Common Rider was very huge in my life, and anything surrounding it, I had to have. And when Common Rider Girls came in, they were there for me when I was going through a lot of stress uh, at that time, and I would just put on their music and just drift away, and. You know, when I listen to songs from them now, I still feel that sort of nostalgic feeling. I, I get those emotions back, and it's really, really nice. And they always will have a dedicated shelf for their stuff uh, in my collection because, again, they're just very, very important to me. So I hope you guys enjoyed, again, Memory Lane with me, and let me know if you want to see more stuff from my other collections. I got a whole bunch of other stuff that I would love to talk to you guys about, and... Uh, yes. So, without further ado, I'm going to head out. I will see you guys very, very soon. There's a lot more content on the channel, so make sure you check that out as well. Thank you guys for boarding my rainbow line. I'll see you guys at the next stop. See you. Samuel, Helen, Andrew, Brandon, Caroline, Daisy, Doni, Emilia, Gwen, Ian, Junior the Hedgehog, Common J, Megley, Mia T. Toon, Nerdy Disney, Our Friend Barney. Thank you to all of my Rainbow Line passengers. See you.